Okay, I've got another problem up here. Back to the notion of area. I want to estimate the area between y equals x squared and the x-axis over this interval. Now, you'll notice these x values are negative. So what? Okay, we're requiring that our function be non-negative, and it is. This is just an interval along the x-axis. If I'm going from negative 3 to negative 1, that has a length of 2. Okay. The endpoints happen to have negative values, but that's okay. I'm going to be just calculating the length of this interval and then the length of the subintervals that I'm getting. Okay. Now, I'm asking us to use a regular partition. We're going to use four rectangles, and we're going to use midpoints as our sample points, which we haven't done yet. Your text actually doesn't introduce using midpoints until section 5.2, but we're almost there. I'm going to go ahead and introduce it now. I am going to ask you in a moment to just pause the video and try this on your own and then tune back in. But before I do that, I notice that sometimes students have trouble drawing the midpoints. So let me just give you an example. Let's suppose that here was my function f of x, and I was working on that subinterval. Okay. So these would be the endpoints of my interval. I would say the midpoint would be right about there. I would come and I would find the height at that midpoint. And now I'm going to let that be the height over this entire interval. So I just need to extend a line across at that height over that entire interval. Now here I already had walls sort of drawn in. If I hadn't, then once I hit that endpoint, I would just draw in that wall to connect the top of my rectangle here to the x-axis. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do this. I do want to see a picture of the rectangles in your sum. Welcome back. Okay, so we're looking at x squared. Now we're looking over the time interval, sorry, over the x interval from negative 3 to negative 1. So it happens to be over there. I'm not going to draw this perfectly to scale but there's my x squared. Okay. All right, and I want the area between that curve and the x-axis. So we're looking for this area right here. Okay. Oops. I'm sorry, I should draw in a wall here as well. We're not concerned with that piece of area. We're just looking for the area between negative 3 and negative 1 between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so if I look at my interval, we're going from negative 3 to negative 1. I already said the length of that interval was 2. Notice I could get that by taking negative 1 minus a negative 3. That becomes negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. Now, probably most of you can get that by inspection, but you can always get the length by subtracting right endpoint minus left endpoint. And the length of the interval is always positive, even if your endpoints happen to be negative numbers. Okay. Now, I'm going to be chopping that up into four pieces. So my delta x is going to be 2 over 4, or 1 half. So I can mark off what those endpoints would be. That's going to give me a negative uh, 5 halves, negative 2, negative 3 halves. These are my endpoints. Okay. Now, I do want to have those marked off. So here's negative 5 halves negative 2, negative 3 halves. That's important because that's where the walls are going to be. That's where I was chopping things, so those are going to be the sides of my rectangles. But when I create my table of values to create my heights, none of these values are going to show up on here because I'm going to be listing my midpoint and then my midpoint squared because that's my function value. I usually write f of my midpoint, but I didn't call this function f, so I'll just say it's my midpoint squared. So I need to figure out what's halfway in between each of these points. Now, I might feel comfortable doing that by inspection. If I don't feel comfortable doing that by inspection, what's halfway in between is always the average, and I get the average by adding and dividing by 2. So negative 3 plus negative 5 halves divided by 2. 
Now that would be negative 6 halves uh, minus 5 halves all over 2. That's going to be negative 11 halves divided by 2 is times 1 half. So that's negative 11 fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mark off in a different color. This would be negative 11 fourths right here. <laughs> and it might help if I just indicate that this would be negative 10 fourths. Negative 3 would be negative 12 fourths. Oh, that makes it a lot easier to see that negative 11 fourths is halfway in the middle. So let's see if that helps us out in general. This would be negative 8 fourths. Halfway between negative 8 fourths and negative 10 fourths would be negative 9 fourths. This would be negative 6 fourths. Halfway between negative 6 and negative 8 fourths is negative 7 fourths. And then this would be negative 4 fourths. So negative 5 fourths is going to be that midpoint. Okay. So negative 11 fourths, negative 9 fourths, negative 7 fourths, and negative 5 fourths are my midpoints, the heights I'm going to get are those midpoints squared. They're what I get when I plug into this function. So this will be 121 sixteenths. This will be 81 sixteenths. This will be 49 sixteenths. And this will be 25 sixteenths. Drawing the picture over here, I'm coming to my midpoint, which would be right about here coming up to that height on the curve, and then I'm extending that height across this interval. So it looks like I'm going to need to just extend this vertical line to complete that rectangle. Then for the next one, I come to my midpoint, which is right about there, come to the height at that midpoint. I'm extending that across this interval. And again, I'm going to need to just extend that vertical line to complete the rectangle. Next one, I come to my midpoint. Here's the function at that midpoint. That becomes the height across this interval. Next one, my midpoint's there. There's my height. That becomes the height over that interval. And so those are my rectangles. Okay. Excellent. So now, I'm ready to estimate the area. Now, I know that it's just going to be this height times the base, plus this height times the base, plus this height times the base, plus this height times the base. But the base is the same for all of them. The base we determined was 1 half. That's the length of each of these subintervals. So I'm going to go ahead and just factor that out right off the bat. It's going to be that common base times the sum of these heights. So 121 sixteenths plus 81 sixteenths plus 49 sixteenths plus 25 sixteenths. So that's going to be one half of some sixteenths. How many? Let's see, 121, 81, 49, and 25. So that's 16, 11, 15, 16, 17. 276 sixteenths. Looks like we can reduce just a little bit. I can cancel a factor of 2. That's going to go in 138 times. I can cancel another factor of 2. That goes into 16 8 times. And we're going to go in 69 times here. So it looks like 69 over 8. You'll notice we got a positive number. We were finding area. Area is not negative. Now in the next section, we're going to start talking about this notion of signed area. But here, we were finding, honest to goodness, geometric area. That's always got to be positive. So the fact, again, that my x values were negative, that just tells me where I was. I was in the negative place. But I had some positive area between the curve and the x-axis here. And this is how I would estimate it using midpoints as my sample point.